I'm really glad you guys met me down here at the video store before sundown because there's some really good reasons on why you should be afraid of the dark. One of those reasons, Fright Night. I'm Kevin Porter, and welcome to Video Rental Chaos. Now, is it really that unreasonable for a teenage boy to request to check out the basement of his neighbor just to make sure he's not a vampire? Welcome to Fright Night. Let's jump on right into this movie. This frightful film opens up on a beautiful shot as we're soon to be introduced to a TV show called Fright Night, hosted by the somewhat washed up Peter Vincent. Beyond the TV, we meet Charlie Brewster and Amy Peterson. You can see that Charlie is a bit preoccupied and is not paying too much attention to this week's episode of Fright Night. In a scene that is vital to the plot of this movie, instead of losing their V-cards, Charlie is distracted by the sight of his two new neighbors, as it appears they're carrying a coffin into their new home. Through a series of missing person reports that are coming over the news the past couple of days, Charlie starts to put the puzzle together and realizes that Jerry Danbridge is in fact a vampire. You see, late into the night, Charlie gets his proof by spying into the home next door and sees firsthand Jerry Dandridge about to feed for the evening. Unfortunately for this peeping Tom though, he is caught. Jerry knows that he has trouble on his vampire hands. The next day, Charlie brings Detective Lennox to the home in an effort to have the cops assist with rounding up his vampire. Billy answers the door and is able to charm his way out of the situation with the detective. Evil Ed is able to provide him with all the stereotypical weapons to fight off a vampire. The next night, Charlie's mom calls him down. To his shock though, he finds that his mother had invited Jerry Dandridge over for a drink, thus giving him all he needs in order to come back and attack Charlie later that night. Charlie even attempts to get the attention of the number one vampire killer on TV, Peter Vincent. But he figures Charlie to be a crazy lunatic and reveals he had just been fired and that he wants to get away from Charlie as quickly as possible. Evil Ed and Amy are worried about their pal Charlie. They visit him at his home just to find his bedroom covered in a layer of crosses and stakes as he lets him know that he's planning on killing Jerry Dandridge once Billy Cole leaves the house. Amy and Ed convince Charlie not to act just yet as they'll try their luck with convincing Peter Vincent to help them. Once Peter is on board for the sum of $500, they plan to meet at Jerry's house the next day to have him consume holy water to prove to Charlie once and for all that he's not a vampire. After everyone seems to be convinced, we see that Peter Vincent does stumble upon the truth as he sees no reflection in his pocket mirror. Sending him into a frazzle, Peter leaves in a hurry, leaving the boys to walk Amy home. Jerry finds the broken mirror and realizes that he has a lot of work to do tonight. He recruits Evil Ed in the back of an alley and sends him to go kill Peter Vincent at his apartment. Luckily, the power of Christ helped Peter and Ed is permanently disfigured. Jerry chases Charlie and Amy into a nightclub. This is where Jerry is able to use his vampire charm to sweep Amy off her feet and take her away from Charlie. He tells Charlie to bring himself and Peter to his home if he ever wants to see Amy alive. Soon after arriving back, Jerry pops the big one and Amy is also turned into a vampire. After meeting with Peter Vincent, it looks like Charlie may be on his own. But in the nick of time though, Peter Vincent, the one true vampire killer, shows up to help Charlie. We think Charlie is about to fend off Jerry, but Billy Cole shows up and throws Charlie over the banister. Peter Vincent runs off into the night and tries to track down Mrs. Brewster. Well, he found Evil Ed instead as we see one of the more out there scenes in horror history. As Ed turns into a werewolf and is launched over the banister and is impaled, we watch him die as Roddy McDowell has one hell of a performance. We are left to believe that Jerry is going to get away with this one as he leaves Charlie with Amy and we see her transitioning into one mean vampire. Luckily, Peter is able to save Charlie, but not so fast though as Billy Cole is back, but Peter, using his gun, shoots him down. Jerry Dandridge shows up and he uses some sort of magic word and we see Billy come back to life, only though to be shot down even more and eventually getting a stake to the heart and melting till he was nothing but bones. He awakens Amy and we end up in the basement with the final showdown. Amy almost gets Charlie, but Peter is able to stick Jerry in the heart, but he doesn't die. Quick to act, they break down the windows allowing sunlight to enter and killing Jerry Dandridge for good. 
Our final scene is back in Charlie's room. We find out that Peter Vincent was able to get his job back on Fright Night. Amy and Charlie are happy and we end with the tease that Evil Ed, well, he really wasn't that dead after all. Fright Night is a horror film that I hold close to my heart. I saw this movie for the first time two years ago during our local Halloween marathon at the movie theater here in town. I was mesmerized by the story of Charlie Brewster and his friend's adventure to kill the vampire. This movie has a perfect mixture of horror and comedy. I love the scene with Detective Lennox and Billy Cole and Charlie arguing about if there was a vampire in the home. You can't forget the scene of Amy shoving the chili cheeseburger into Charlie's face. This gave us the film's most memorable quote, You're so cool, Brewster. Tom Holland always does a wonderful job with his directing, and Chris Sarandon really is underrated as an actor in general, in my opinion. The special effects team, as the story goes, had just come off working on Ghostbusters and went straight into Fright Night. So they had the best of the best with Richard Edlin being the head guy in charge of the special effects. Finally, I can't comment enough on how much I love the score and chosen songs for this film. Especially the end track aptly named Fright Night. All summer I was rocking the song, but you can't find it on iTunes or Spotify. You can only find the song as a bootleg upload on YouTube. Kinda weird that such a catchy song is not available in the year 2023 streaming. To finalize this one for me, Fright Night is my favorite vampire film of all time. And I know a lot of people will disagree with me on this one, but I'm a comedy guy at heart. And when you mix that in with the horror that is brought to us within this film, I can't get enough of it. To some, Bela Lugosi will always be their favorite, but for me, give me Chris Sarandon any day of the week. Until next time, I'll see you at the video store.